Hello everyone and welcome back to this EasySnap iRig overview. In this video, we'll be going over the EasySnap iRig Pro. As always, all versions can be purchased on Blender Market and Gumroad. Links are in the description. So let's get started. In this final video, we'll switch over to our Pro Heather rig. And immediately we see a few changes. The shape of the eyes is a little bit different. We have eyelashes, and if we select the main mesh, we see that our in the shader editor, there's a lot more customization available. And if we move over to the modifiers tab, we see that we have the majority of our functions unified. So let's get started with the shader editor. And let's zoom in and take a look at what is available here. So just like in the light version, a lot of the things are the same. We have a few more, a lot more uh, drivers connected to this particular rig, but we also have a few options to add in our own images. We'll get to that a little bit later. Moving back over to the modifiers tab, let's start with the eye style. So if I go to one, we're back at the original eye shape that we use for the basic and the light version. But now I can select two for a, what we call the leaf shape, three for a trapezoidal shape, four for a circular shape, and in the male version, two is a more oval shape. So let's leave it on two and we'll go to the iris style. Right now it's selected as one. There's only one and zero. That's to turn on and off the, the gradients. So now we don't really have to go over to our shader editor at all if, if we choose not to, because we have the functions here. So if we leave that on and we move down to our iris textures, it's exactly as you'd think it would be. It's how much texture do you want in the iris? So you can see we're turning it on and off there. And it's separated per eye because you never know what kind of creative ideas you may have. So if we go back up to the eye style and bring the number down to zero, we see that the eyes disappear. And if we go over to the shader editor, that is because it is activating these three nodes. Now this should be connected. There we go. And what it's doing is it's saying that for option zero in the eye style, you can choose your own eye outline, sclera and red eye. Now to use these options, you must follow the template that was provided in on the downloads page once you've purchased the EasySnap iRig Pro. But just to give you an idea of what these look like, we'll change our 3D viewport over to the UV and I'll go through the, the, um, the arc styles here. So we have the red eye, looks something like that. And we have the neutral sclera and we have the outline. This is generally, generally what your, at least dimensionally, what your eye images should look like. But once you've incorporated those styles into the nodes, we'll switch this back to the 3D viewport, you'll be able to treat it like any of the other eye styles. So once you switch to zero, it'll activate those images and you'll be able to use your own, your own custom designs. So let's switch this back on and continue down with the options. So as I said before, all of the functions here are now brought over to this panel. However, for the time being, the gradient color options will still need to be chosen in the shaders editor. Moving along, we have the universal iris colors. 
along with the universal eyelid color now in the Acer Pro controls panel. Below that we have the red eye, the roughness values, all of which are available in the light version. But what's new to the pro version are cheek occlusions. And we activate the cheeks by raising them up. And you can see that it starts from below the UV layer. And when you raise it up, it has a max height. Now, if you need it to go a little bit higher, you can use the scale value to raise it up, but you don't want it to go too high because then it'll break the, the masks. Or if you want to change the, the shape of the cheek occlusion, um, you can use scale to do that as well. Currently, there are two cheek styles available, but in the 2.0 version, there will be more. So we have the double line cheek style, and then we have the single. Now, if you look closely, you can see that there is a bit of a fine line showing the underlying image. Currently, that's being looked into, but at the moment, we don't have a solution for that just yet. Now, to duplicate the Pro Rig, we follow the same steps that we did for the basic version with duplicating the Pro Collection. And we'll just turn off our original collection. And we'll see that just like in the basic version, everything is detached, but that's okay. We're gonna address that in a moment. We want to reveal the hierarchy of everything in the collection. Just to be safe, we're going to open everything up. It's just a standard practice of mine. On every level. And then we're going to box select by selecting B. Everything in the, in the collection. All right, there we go. Then we'll go over to edit, batch rename, and we'll change the name Heather to, let's say Casey. And we'll make sure that all our, our options are correct. Selected, yes, objects, yes, and Hit OK twice. And now we see that all of our objects are changed to Casey, but we're not done yet. We want to go over to the material properties. Select make unique user. And we'll change the name Heather there to Casey. And we'll select the shield just to make sure that we don't lose it. And then we'll go over to the shader editor. We'll select the group, zoom in there, and we can see that it's still using the previous group node. We want to make this unique, so we'll select the number there to make it unique. We'll rename it to Casey. And we'll select the shield just to keep it. So up until now, all of these steps have been the same process that we followed for the basic and the light versions. This is where it gets a little bit more unique to the pro version. So we want to go over to the modifiers. We want to make sure that the pro controls are also unique. So we'll select the number. We'll change that to Casey. And we'll select the shield. And then we'll go over to the drivers editor. And we'll make sure that our only show selected option is turned off so we can see all of the drivers. We'll select each driver and we're going to have to make sure that all of the driver prop names are set to Casey. So we see that for the first two, they're selected. Once we hit red eye, we see that it's still Heather. So we'll change that to Casey. And we'll do that for the rest of the 
of the drivers. Now once we're done, we have one final step to go. We go back to the shader editor, select the group node, we'll tab into edit mode, and I'll just hit control space to maximize it. And for all the green nodes, we just have to change those to our new character KC as well. So I'll go in here, I'll select the name. And once we're done with that, we'll tab back out of the group node and control space to return back to our main window. And then we'll select our look at target and we'll move around and see that everything is back to the way that it should be. And that's how you duplicate the Easy Snap Pro iRig. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to hearing them in the comment section or you can send me a message on Blender Market. Hope you enjoy the product. Thanks.